Airplanes come in all shapes and sizes, and in this video I'm going to explain to you why fighter jets wings look like this, while commercial airplane wings look like this. The wing geometry on an aircraft is perhaps the most important shape of a plane. And don't you just love the shape of wings? So in this video I'm going to break down wing design into three different categories. The first being the thickness of the wing or the aspect ratio. Second, the wing position or where the wings are mounted on the body of the aircraft. And third, the wing plan form or the wing geometry when you're looking down on the airplane. To really understand why wings are shaped the way they are, let's first look at some characteristics of wings. First, we have the cord length or the length from the front of the wing to the back of the wing. Next, the wingspan, or the length of the wing from side to side. And that brings us to our first definition, which I already mentioned earlier, aspect ratio. In aeronautics, the aspect ratio is the ratio of the wingspan to the mean cord length. Therefore, a long, narrow wing has a high aspect ratio. And an airplane with a smaller aspect ratio has shorter and wider wings. The aspect ratio is an incredibly important characteristic to a wing. Typically, airplanes with higher aspect ratios are lower speed, higher lift aircraft designed with efficiency in mind. For example, drone aircraft and commercial aircraft typically feature high aspect ratios. One of the main reasons that high aspect ratio wings have lower drag is due to their reduction of induced drag. I explain what induced drag is at length in another video. But essentially what induced drag is, is when the high pressure air on the bottom of the wing slips over the side of the wing onto the top of the wing where there's a low pressure region, pushing down on the wing and requiring the aircraft to produce even more lift. We can actually see the physical manifestation of this phenomenon in what's known as wingtip vortices as we can see here. There's a few reasons why induced drag is reduced because of high aspect ratios such as this. For one, the smaller, thinner section of the wing doesn't have as much of a chance for the air to slip over the side of the wing. The second reason is that most of the air is all flowing in the same direction since the wing is so long and that there's a lot of air to keep it flowing in the same direction. On the side of the wing, there's only a small amount of area where the air can escape from one surface to the other. As you may have already noticed, cargo planes such as the C5 Galaxy feature large aspect ratios. Beyond the reduction of reduced drag, these cargo planes use large aspect ratio wings to also increase the stability of the aircraft, which is pretty intuitive when you think about it because longer wings means the airplane is going to be more stable. Another benefit of these high aspect ratio wings is that they're able to produce more lift at lower angles of attack. There is a downside to this, however and it's that higher aspect ratio wings tend to have lower stall angles than low aspect ratio wings. As we can see on this graph, the lower the aspect ratio of the wing, the higher the stall angle becomes. In other words, the lower aspect ratio wings are able to be more maneuverable than their higher aspect ratio counterparts. That's why you almost always see lower aspect ratio in fighter jets that are meant to be more maneuverable. And as I mentioned earlier, the higher aspect ratio wings are more stable. However, these fighter aircraft are specifically designed to be unstable. And it's this dynamic instability that allows these fighter jets to do incredible maneuvers like this. And that brings us to our second category, wing positions. Aerospace engineers actually found that if you angle the wings of an airplane upwards, that actually allows them to become more stable in flight. These are known as dihedral wings. You may have even noticed that commercial aircraft actually feature dihedral wings. Dihedral wings are a clever little invention. Clever girl. Dihedral wings actually play in a little phenomenon known as side slip. What this means is that when an aircraft rolls, it doesn't just roll to the side, but it also begins to slip this way. And when that happens, 
the air actually hits the wing at a different angle. And when this side slip happens on dihedral wings, the inside wing of the roll is exposed to more air, which produces more lift, which pushes the aircraft back to center to auto-stabilize it. So if this was a dihedral aircraft and the wings were angled upwards, when the airplane would roll and begin the side slip, this wing would produce more lift and it would push the aircraft back to level flight. This works so well that when the engineers found that the F-4 Phantom had stability problems, they just angled the wing tips upwards to give them a dihedral angle. After adding this dihedral angle to the wing tips, this aircraft, the F-4 Phantom, went on to become one of the most successful US military aircraft ever developed. And as you may imagine, this is an incredibly important design feature for commercial aircraft and adding much needed stability to its platform. By contrast, planes such as the F-16 are specifically designed to be unstable in flight which is exactly why the F-16 has straight wings. These straight wings actually help the aircraft maneuver even better. The opposite of a dihedral angle is an anhedral angle where the wings are angled downwards and it has the opposite effect. Typically, wings are positioned on the fuselage of an aircraft in three different positions, high wing, mid wing, and low wing. The placement of these wings do have aerodynamic effects on the aircraft as a whole. However, the most often cited reason for the placement of these wings are mostly practical. For instance, a low wing allows the wing spar to be carried through the wing but without inhibiting the space within the fuselage, which is why you'll often see low wings on commercial and cargo aircraft planes. A high wing, on the other hand, is often used when ground clearance is an issue. For instance, planes like the C-130, the C-17, and the C-5 all have high mounted wings. This allows for ground clearance for the engines, but it also allows the cargo to be lowered to the ground for easier offloading. Mid wings are often used in fighter jets as they don't have the same need for cargo space within the fuselage. However, there are some outlier wing positions that don't fall within these three categories, such as a flying wing or a blended wing body. And that brings us to our third wing design category, the wing plan form. The wing plan form is the silhouette of the wing when viewed from above or below. The simplest wing plan form is just a box wing or a rectangular wing. This is by far the cheapest and the easiest wing to manufacture, which is why you'll often find it on aircraft such as this. The next major type of wing plan form is the tapered wing or the swept wing. In this video right here, I discuss at length why wings are swept backwards. But essentially, a tapered or a swept wing is used to mitigate the effects of wave drag. For planes that are designed to be supersonic, they often feature what's known as a delta wing. This design also drastically reduces the drag experienced on an aircraft. But this design is not without its drawbacks. For one, this aircraft has a very small aspect ratio. And because of this, at lower subsonic speeds, it does not generate as much lift as an airplane with a higher aspect ratio. There was one airplane that designed a very unique approach to this design challenge. Instead of just picking one wing or the other, they decided they could have the both the best worlds. When Grumman engineers were designing the F-14 Tomcat, they decided to utilize what's known as a variable geometry wing. That means that the wing will be able to change shape during flight. So when the F-14 needed to take off and needed to generate a lot of lift at a slower speed, the wings were straight. But when the aircraft needed to reduce its drag to travel at supersonic speeds, it could literally sweep its own wings back and become more of a delta wing. So in other words, this aircraft could take all the advantages of a high aspect ratio wing and a low aspect ratio wing on the same aircraft. Most aircraft have some variation of what's known as a wing and tube design. Or in other words, they got some wings and they got some body in the middle. But that's not to say that all aircraft have a wing and tube design. One wing design that's not used nearly as much as the other ones is known as a flying wing or a blended wing body. So instead of slapping some wings on a tube, this airplane actually has one wing that encompasses the whole aircraft, meaning that the entire aircraft is used to generate lift. This drastically reduces the drag experience on the aircraft. However, that's not to say that there aren't problems with this design. The first of which is stability. This aircraft doesn't handle like a normal one, because it doesn't feature a vertical and horizontal stabilizer, or a tail. That means that the aircraft isn't as intuitive to fly for pilots naturally. Another challenge 
is the fact that it's not as easy to manufacture. For the better part of the last century, aerospace manufacturers have been making airplanes with pretty much the same design, a wing and tube. So to totally change up the manufacturing plan and make one giant wing makes it a little more difficult to manufacture. If you paid close attention to the three categories that I talked about today, you'll notice that I never mentioned the cross-sectional or horizontal area of a wing. This is known as an airfoil, and it's actually one of the most important parts of the wing, so important in fact that I dedicated an entire video about this topic. So if you haven't already seen that video, make sure you click on the link right here, and it'll take you to that video. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you're gonna like my other video, so make sure you hit that subscribe button as we go deeper into our exploration of all things air and space here at Aviation Austin. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't checked out my other aerospace engineering videos yet, make sure you check out the playlist that I've carefully curated for all of your engineering needs. Thank you so much for watching, and Godspeed.